What's up, everybody? I am not a software engineer, but I did figure out how to use Meta's Code Llama on my 4090. Um, this was actually kind of a pain to get working. It was both more difficult and less difficult than it should have been. So we're going to go ahead and walk through this. So if you're interested in getting Code Llama, you may come across this blog post here. And if you want to download the model, of course, you have to give a bunch of info and then do some stuff and yada, yada, yada. You have to go to the Facebook research uh, GitHub repo, and then you kind of have to go through these instructions. And uh, ultimately, I was able to do that, but the model did not work uh, the way that I thought it would. So I went ahead and jumped down the rabbit hole to try and figure out other ways to make this thing work. And ultimately, I came across this right here, which is Code Llama's 34 billion uh, training attributes instruct GTPQ model that is uploaded here courtesy of the bloke. Um, who I believe that's kind of this individual's whole thing, is that uh, essentially all these new models are uploaded to uh, this Hugging Face repo. But by and large, uh, instead of just downloading this and then assuming that it would work, what I did is figure out that I kind of need to use a front end for it. Um, and so that led me to the text generation web UI that we see here. So this does have some pretty decent instructions. I'm gonna go ahead and walk through them and kind of show you what they look like on my machine because again, this is an NVIDIA 4090 GPU on my machine um, and I'm actually using the Windows subsystem for Linux. So it is somewhat of a unique environment. I know some of you probably have this, but I know others probably use PowerShell or just the Windows version of Python or are on native Linux. So if you're running Windows and WSL and you have a 4090, this should work. Um, now, should work, obviously. Uh, famous last words, but I did want to kind of show you the actual drivers that I'm running. So here's the output of my NVIDIA SMI. You can see my driver version is 536.23. My CUDA version is 12.2. Uh, I made the text on this gigantic so you could see it. I have gotten some feedback in the past saying that sometimes the text is too small. Um, so that's why it's gigantic this time. But we're going to go ahead and walk through these steps. And the first thing is to actually curl this uh, file here. This is not my favorite or the most secure thing in the world, which is basically just, you know, curling a file that's at a uh, URL here into a file on your system, which is essentially a binary. Um, and we can actually cat this file because I've already downloaded it. But if I actually do not cat this file because it is... Um, Let's see, I'll show you why you don't want to cat this file. So this is actually uh, an executable, and so you'll just get a bunch of uh, nonsense, and it will essentially crash your terminal. So do not cat this file. But I've already downloaded the miniconda3.sh file, and I can go ahead and run that uh, the way that the instructions say here, which is just running bash miniconda3. Of course, that didn't work. Let's try it again. There we go. So one thing I wanted to say is you can't just hold enter through this. It will actually uh, quit, which is probably one of the most annoying installers I've ever seen. Um, you kind of need to go all the way through it and you'll see why in just a moment. It will just randomly hit um, a place where you have to enter yes. And if you keep holding enter, it will basically quit, right? So there we go, right here. So if I would have been holding enter right here, it would've just would've, just would have quit, which is super annoying. But I'm gonna go ahead and type yes. And uh, yeah, this is fine. I'm going to install it to my home directory in the Miniconda folder. And I've already installed it, so this isn't actually going to work. Um, you can even see the base thing here. But if you've not installed it, this will work and basically it will successfully exit the installer. So at this point, we can go ahead and continue on and I'm going to create a new Conda environment. Uh, and I can do that here. Now, I believe this already exists, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete it really quickly. Okay, so now that that is removed, I can just copy this in here and create that new Conda environment. And I'll go ahead and type yes, or Y rather. And lastly, I can just copy this and we can activate TextGen. So at this point, we will want to install PyTorch. I've already done this, but I'm going to do it in the virtual environment that I just activated. So I'll go ahead and run the pip3 version of that command. And we got some red, but I'm pretty sure we should be good here. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and git clone the text generation web UI. And before I do that, I'm just going to make a new directory really quickly. Make dir, and I'll just call that demo. 
And then I'm going to CD into the demo, and then we can paste in the git clone. Going back to the instructions, we can just CD into it. And finally, I'll just install requirements.txt, but I'm going to do that with pip3, just to make sure. All right, let's try pip. Got a few errors, but I think I should be okay. Um, so there's a couple other things that we can kind of skip here. Uh, I don't have the need to go through this. So we're going to take a look at the directory structure here. Um, and so if I actually do an ls, we can see that there's this models directory. And if I ls models, uh, you can see that there's nothing here. So there is a tool called download model. Uh, and the way that you can use that is just Python 3 download model. And then we're actually going to go back to the hugging face page here. And then I'm going to copy this. And uh, then I can go back over and just paste that right there. And so the command I had to run to install requests is python3 m pip rather than pip3. Um, and this is one of the issues with Python in general is that if you have a bunch of different versions, then knowing which pip version goes with which version of Python is a pain, but yeah. Um, so at this point, I should be able to run that download model again. Nope, I need tqdm, so we'll just go ahead and do a python3 m pip install tqdm. Try it again. And so this is 18.3 gigabytes, as you can see here. Uh, so it will take a few minutes. I will pause the video and get back once it is done. Okay, so the model is downloaded and I can do an ls on the models directory and we can see that it is here in this folder. Um, so at this point in time, we can go ahead and go back to the instructions of the text, uh, text gen web UI. And uh, as we can see, I can go ahead and just run the server with Python server.py. So I'm actually going to do a Python 3 server.py. And uh, I don't think I installed requirements.txt yet, so let's go ahead and do that. Python 3-m pip install r requirements.txt. This will take just a moment. All right, so at this point, we should be able to run the server. So it basically says it's running on a local URL, which means that I can open this in a web browser. And uh, I'll just open a new tab here and dump that in. And so we can basically see this UI that doesn't have a whole lot going on. But if I go over to the model tab, I should be able to see the bloke code llama 34 billion instruct to GPTQ. So if I click this, um, I can go ahead and load the model, but before I do that, I'm going to change this over to the xlama hf, and then I'm actually going to increase this a bit. Um, I think I did all the way up to five, yeah, right around here. Um, and I'm not 100% sure what the intricacies of these different settings are, but this one did work for me just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and hit load. And so we can actually see this taking place. Um, if we look at the uh, task manager and then go to the performance tab and then the GPU, um, you'll basically see this dedicated GPU memory filling up uh, as it loads the model. So this will get to about 20 gigs out of the 24 that I have in the 4090 and it takes about five to 10 minutes, I wanna say. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sit for a moment as this increases and basically saturates all available memory on my GPU. Be back in a moment. So at this point in time, the model is fully loaded. As you can see, it is using the majority of my GPU memory, and it also says it successfully loaded the bloke code llama 34B. So what I can actually do is go over to the chat functionality, which is really the entire premise of code llama, right? And so we can actually generate some code. And uh, I'm going to give it a prompt that is not the most complicated thing in the world, but it is at least something that can show us that it works. And that's just going to be, let's make a game in Python where you generate a number between 1 and 100. The user can then enter a guess and the computer will tell it if the guess is too low or too high 
or correct. The player has five guesses before the game is over. All right, so I can go ahead and hit enter. And you might actually be able to hear my GPU. So this is actually telling me that it is ready uh, with the game basically set up. And we don't actually want that. We want it to generate the code, so I'm gonna ask it again. Can you generate the code for me in Python? And it starts to actually generate the code. So you can see that it stops here, and this is likely due to the settings uh, that I actually did in the model uh, when we loaded it. And uh, we can take a look at what's going on here, and we can see that it kind of stops at this 199 tokens. Um, so I can actually hit continue, and that will pick up where it left off, which is nice. So I'm going to go ahead and actually test this to see if it works. And I'm just going to copy this and open a new window here. So I'm actually going to create a new Python file and then basically enter the code. Here we go, I have not looked at it whatsoever. I'm just gonna go ahead and blindly run it. Guess the number between one and 100, I'm gonna say 50. Uh, this says that the number was incorrect, the number was four. So we can go ahead and go back to the code and say, I would like for the code to allow the player to guess five times. Each guess, let the player know if the previous guess was too high or too low or correct. And it's actually going to, in context, generate a new version of the code. And we can see that it's starting to have like the max guesses equals five variable. It's gonna stop generating here. I can take a look in the console and see. Um, actually, it did not seem to print that. Okay, so it does print the 199 again, which is kind of where we cut off. So I can go ahead and hit continue. And uh, okay, we're gonna try this now. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy it. So I'm just gonna remove the old one, game test.py and then nano game test dot py paste the code in try that one more time and now it's just saying enter guess i'm gonna say 50 my guess is too high i'm gonna say 25 too low i'm gonna say 35 too high i'm gonna say 30 29 and i win the number was 29 um so this code seems to actually work now i don't know what would happen if i fail every time i'll just say one every time Okay, so this is what happens. If I do not guess the right number, it just gives me the number 52 at the end. So this is a very simple game, a very simple code generation as you can see, but it did actually work and uh, relatively painless in doing so. And of course, if we wanted to compare this to what we might see with ChatGPT, I can go ahead and load ChatGPT up. And I'll use GPT-4 because I pay for it, why not? So the code does look somewhat similar. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it and I'm gonna place that in a new file and we'll call that nano game gpt.py. Paste that in, run that. And uh, we'll go ahead and try the 50 again. Too high, so we'll say 25. Too low, 35. Too low again, 42. And last one, 40. Nice, we got it. Okay, so by and large, ChatGPT and Code Llama generated a game that was close enough to what I was trying to get it to do. Um, obviously, this is a very simple example, and you can imagine more complex use cases are probably better to really kind of test whether or not Code Llama is better than GPT-4. I'll leave that up to you. Um, if you made it this far, I am hoping that you're able to get it to work on your computer and not just watching me get it to work on my computer.
And uh, really quick, just one last thing. Um, if you were to like leave this here and forget about it and then run a game, it probably wouldn't be the greatest thing in the world. So remember that you do want to unload the model when you're done using it. So you can actually go back to the text gen UI, go back to the model section and hit unload. We can go back to performance monitor and you will see that the dedicated GPU memory is freed up as it was before we loaded it. So um, go ahead and remember to do that when you're done using Code Llama. Uh, in any case, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to them. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.